Hey, VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. Back to post another quick video here, just to share a few recent finds. And uh, also do just kind of a really quick concert review type thing. Uh, went and saw a pretty cool show last night. Um, but anyway, we'll kind of start off with the recent finds. Not a lot of stuff, but just a few things. I know uh, Mags did a video the other day. She kind of mentioned about some CDs that we found the other day. And I picked up a few myself. So I thought I'd show those along with a few records that I got. Uh, first CD here, Diana Crawl. An artist I'm kind of getting into. Just really kind of a uh, jazz vocalist type thing. Um, just kind of recently discovered her. And so found that for a dollar, which is really nice. Because I'm definitely looking to get a lot more of her stuff. Uh, another CD here, David Sanborn. This is a kind of, I guess, smooth jazz type of guy. I stumbled across a bunch of his stuff in dollar bins and just been kind of picking it up over the years. And, you know, he's one of those people that doesn't really have like a great song that I really love by him, but he's just kind of nice to sit back and listen to sometimes, just when you're kind of in a mellow type mood or whatever. And so. It's like I can't say he's one of my favorite jazz artists, but yet I probably have like eight or nine of his pieces because it's just, you know, kind of good, it's good stuff. Another little flashback here from kind of the high school, college years. Uh, this is No Mercy. Remember they had that kind of a one hit wonder, Where Do You Go? Just kind of some old fun stuff to reminisce on. Eddie Money, Nothing to Lose. I want to get this on vinyl too but I haven't found a, a copy at a good price yet. This was kind of weird. Mac Romantics. Um, I guess Moments and Movement. Again, I've been picking up more jazz and, you know, especially jazz vocal stuff and things like that. So I saw that cover and I thought, oh, okay, this is only a dollar or two. Let me just kind of, you know, go give her a quick listen and see what it's like. Totally not what I expected. She's like a... Again, okay, maybe some of you know her or not, I don't, uh, but she's kind of like a, a UK type hip hop artist or something like that. And again, you don't, don't get that from this cover. And, and actually, not half bad, very, um, very, very Missy Elliott like, who is one of the few modern day uh, rappers I actually like is Missy Elliott. So uh, I picked it up, I was like, that's weird, but there's a couple things on there that's not too bad. But definitely one of those those shot blind buys. And then we got Queens right here. This is their release from 2013, no, 2011, I think. 11 or 12. Hold on a second. Uh, 2011. Dedicated to Chaos. I haven't listened to it all the way through yet. I have heard a couple of songs off of it, so I'm kind of familiar with it. I still can't get over what's the name of that bald head. It just doesn't. It just doesn't look right on him. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that was another good pickup for only a dollar. And then Maggie showed this one too, because we both ended up getting this one, which is the Jive Miss Redmond Quartet. And I listened to like the first three tracks in the store, and it's a pretty, pretty good smooth jazz album. It's actually kind of a nice mixture of traditional jazz and smooth jazz kind of put together. So uh, that's, a, that's a really good CD. And always nice to discover a new artist. Uh, new LPs, little VCLT from Maggie the other day. Uh, she knew that I was looking for this album for quite some time, and um, I don't know. Like I said I, I, I've definitely kind of mentioned it to her a bunch of times, and you know when you do that, she always keeps stuff up there. So I was very appreciative when she surprised me with this, which is Jesus and the Mary Chain Psycho Candy. I've been wanting this album for a long time and just never stumbled across one at a good price and they had of course this nice reissue that came out. Um, I'll never forget like last year, yeah towards the end of last year I was at a record show and I'm digging with beside this guy and, I, and he's in the stack right next to me and he pulls out a copy of this and it's marked for like seven dollars. And like you know he pulls it out and he kind of holds it. And I'm like, oh, please put that back in, please put that back in. You know, I'm just like picking out a corner of my eye. And he gets ready to put it back in and he starts flipping again. And then he goes back to it and he pulls it out. 
sets it to the side. I'm like, oh, oh you fuck. It's like, why do I even have to see that? So, uh, I had always been holding out to get one at a good price, and from what she told me she got this one for, it, it was at a pretty good price, so that was, that was pretty awesome. So, again, thank you very much, Max. You know, I wanted this a lot, so I really, really appreciate you picking that up for me. Um, went to another store that I hadn't been to in a while, and I, I had some credits still there, so I thought, let me just go here and kind of see if I can find something. I sold some equipment there a long time ago and had a few bucks still on my credit slip, so I picked up two things with that, which was number one, another great addition to my John Coltrane collection, which is a new thing at Newport, it's John Coltrane with Archie Shep, really, really good stuff there, and again, this is one I've wanted for a while and just never found at a good price, uh, I did find one one time that was like $12, but the album was a different pressing than the cover. It was an Impulse cover, but it was a later releasing of, I think, the MCA release as far as the vinyl went. And I was just like, I don't want an album that doesn't, you know, different cover than the album, blah, blah. So I kind of held out, and, and I'm glad I did, because I got to use my little credit to pick up this one. Really good shape. Again, on the Impulse label. Really, really nice stuff. I think I might do an artist collection pretty soon too and kind of sh share my John Coltrane collection because I'm really kind of happy with the direction that one's going. Uh, and last but not least, another one I just didn't have and kind of stumbled across, which is Loudness. This is Lightning Strikes. And it's just typical Loudness stuff on here. I mean, really good tracks as always. Uh, my favorite song here is probably Ashes in the Sky, but uh, another good addition to the hair metal collection. So those were the kind of a few pickups over the past week or so. Um, concert review. Uh, got a good stretch of concerts coming up here, which, is, which has been awesome. Um, you know, I saw Fleetwood Mac a few weeks ago, and then saw Boris last week, and then last night I saw three bands, which is really cool. First one I'll talk about is Ted Nugent. Saw him last night. Which was really, really cool, too, because, you know, everybody kind of knows Ted, but most people who maybe aren't big, big, big fans of his probably couldn't name five or ten of his actual songs, you know? They just kind of, you get past Cat Scratch Fever and uh, maybe Stranglehold, and nobody kind of knows anything about him, but everyone knows Ted, you know? And uh, so, when I first went there, I was like, you know... I'm not huge on Ted's catalog, even though I have a bunch of his stuff. I like listening to him, but I don't know him. And so I was kind of thinking, you know, that might be the least exciting part of the show. Completely wrong. Oh my goodness. If any man can rock a stage, it, it is Ted Nugent. Um, the, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those you have to be there kind of things, but his... Just like, well, I mean, you know, his energy and everything else, I mean, you know, Ted is just kind of an all-American kind of guy. I mean, you know, everybody knows about Ted. But uh, I was just amazed at how big his sound was. Um, I mean, it's just it's just one thing to hear the song Cat Scratch Fever. You know, you listen to it and everything else. But to hear him actually, like, play it on stage and with the guitar tone that he had and everything else, you're like, holy cow, this is heavy stuff. And I mean, Ted can riff. <laughs> I was I was extremely impressed. I mean, I went with a friend of mine, and we actually both said the same thing. Because at first we were both like, you know, I'm not even rushing to get there because you know I'm not that excited about sitting through Ted or whatever else. And at the end of it, we were like, that was freaking awesome. So, uh, Uncle Ted, I apologize for doubting you in any way, shape, or form because that. That dude freaking, I mean, he, he rocked. The, 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 that was as heavy as any band I've ever seen on stage. Which, again, just sounds weird with the kind of this, you know, southern classic rock thing that he does. But, uh, I mean, they, they were heavy. To Ted, Ted can riff. Ted can riff. So I was really, really happy to get a chance to see him. You know, like I say, hearing him play the intro to Cat Scratch Fever or even that little guitar riff at the beginning of Stranglehold. Oh, man, he was... He was doing it. So Ted came on first, and then next up was, you see I have my little new koozie here, Sticks. 
uh, they came on after Ted. And best thing I can say about Sticks, they sound ex I mean, nothing has changed with them whatsoever, with the exception that they're a little bit older. And even a couple of them didn't even look older. <laughs> I mean, but uh, just just perfection. Their harmonies, their uh, you know, just everything. That they they sound just like they did with albums that you listen to from the 70s and 80s. I mean, it's, it's really impressive. Um, and that's one thing I really like about bands like that because one thing that sometimes kind of irks me is when you go to a live show and, you know, what, I guess for lack of better terms, you know, the production, you know, no, it's not really, you know, you know what I mean, but just kind of like uh, the bands don't even try to perform the songs the way, the way they do in the studio where they're trying to get perfect harmonies, perfect melodies, and just like really make everything flow nice. Uh, one guy that's really bad about that is Rob Zombie, which I still love going to see live all the time, but he puts no effort <laughs> into trying to make anything sound like it did on the record of CDs. But, uh, but still, I'll go see Rob a million times because I love him. But the, the sticks, I mean, again, sometimes you had to question whether you were listening to a CD playing or if they were actually performing it live. So, beautiful, beautiful performance. And you know, you have stuff like Come Sail Away and Renegade and I mean, uh, just just all kinds of stuff. So absolutely fabulous to see a classic band like that, actually to see them live. That was uh, definitely one to cross off the bucket list. So after Styx put on a fabulous show, the next band that came up actually was this one you see here. That's right, I have an Ario Speedwagon t-shirt. <laughs> Loving it to death. So, uh, Ario Speedwagon was the headliner. Um, and I mean, Ario is Ario. I mean, everybody knows them, everybody knows all their stuff, and uh, they put on a really great performance as well. They also sounded pretty, pretty good. Uh, you know, what's his name? He's still fighting to get to those high notes and everything. And the guy is like, what, 98 years old or something like that? And, and again, they, they put on a really great show too, so that, that was an awesome lineup, man. Ted, Sticks, and Ario Speedwagon. Just three to cross off the bucket list. Great, great show. So, uh, a couple more coming up here pretty soon. Um, one is that really huge. <laughs> again, I can't wait. Um, I just got my ticket in the mail actually last week, so really, really excited about that. But just wanted to share that with you, VC. And, uh, it's all, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't tell you the beginning. In case anyone's curious, this was playing in the background. Kind of got the Ted bug today, so going to be spinning some of his stuff. It's Ted Nugent, Cat Scratch Fever. So anyway, alright, well thanks for checking it out, VC. Appreciate it as always, and we will talk to you guys soon. Alright, take care guys, and gals.